It's bigger than just a game. Keep your eye on number 22. Hard looking. Here's Clark. She fires. And goes! These moments have a greater impact on the next generation. She wants to be strong like her, determined like her, confident like her, win like her. You know it's level two this is why we do it. We are on the rise, and it's only the beginning for her. It's time to support her. Together, Hawkeye Women Rise. On the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield, this is the Hawkeye Women Rise podcast, presented by the Iowa City Area Sports Commission. The Hawks, <laughs> with history, off to the title game, 77-73. The Hawks and LSU Sunday afternoon for the national championship. Hawkeye Women Rise podcast highlights the past, present, and future of Iowa women's sports. My entire life had revolved around competitive sport. And so it was that experience that, I, that gave me the drive to try to change things because we have nothing to lose and we have absolutely everything to gain. We tell remarkable stories, highlight incredible accomplishments, both in competition and life. Feel inspired by the stories of adversity overcome and celebrate Iowa women's athletics. We're going to the national championship! Together, Hawkeye women rise. Live from the Iowa Athletic Club in the Iowa River Landing, this is Hawkeye Women Rise. Presented by the Iowa City Area Sports Commission, here's the host of Hawkeye Women Rise, Iowa tennis coach, Sasha Schmid. Welcome, Hawk fans. This is the Hawkeye Women Rise podcast. We are thrilled to be with you and thank you to the Athletic Club restaurants for hosting us in person. And thank you to the Iowa City Area Sports Commission for sponsoring this podcast and being such incredible supporters of Iowa women athletics. It's very exciting to be in person and have the energy in the room today. Thank you to everyone who has made it out to lunch to join us. You know, Herky's Voice podcast came into life in the midst of a pandemic during social distancing and over Zoom. And so the evolution of the podcast into a live show with an audience now seems very perfect and fitting. It also seems very fitting to be calling the show Hawkeye Women Rise, because boy, are Hawkeye women on the rise. We will be talking about that as a theme throughout all of our shows. But the name also mirrors our Iowa Athletics Capital Campaign for Hawkeye Women Athletics. The goal of raising awareness and support for Iowa women's athletics has been at the forefront of this show. So we thought it would be perfect to start off our show with a new segment that we are calling Support Her. And I'm thrilled to have Sloan Tyler from our athletic development team here today to speak with us. Sloan is our Senior Director of Development. Welcome, Sloan. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, I wanted to have you kick off the show um, because the Hawkeye Women Rise is a capital campaign that is so exciting and it's something that's come into fruition um, recently and I thought maybe you could give us some background in terms of how this campaign came to life. Yes, yes. So Hawkeye Women Rise really started with an initiative called Herkies, capital H-E-R Herkies. You were a big part of that with the first iteration of your podcast and many, many staff and people were involved in that initiative and that was to build support and enthusiasm for Iowa women's athletics. So when it was time to start thinking about how to grow that into a sustainable fundraising and marketing initiative, we wanted to look at a different name that sort of captured the vision and the goals. And really I give a lot of credit to Beth Getz who when we were talking about how to put this campaign together, she really felt strongly that we needed to include all women's sports. And we were always gonna include all women's sports, but we were thinking maybe we would add different initiatives as we went. And she really at the beginning want, said, let's include everybody, let's include everything all at once and launch it all together, which was really great um, visionary thought. So that's what we did. So Hawkeye Women Rise, it's an all encompassing campaign for all women's sports at Iowa. Um, so going back to just talking about how we got to the name, um, I really worked closely with Kelsey Laverdeer, who is our assistant athletic director for marketing. 
And there were, there were dozens and dozens of people that worked on this, really brilliant graphic designers, communicators, social media people, leaders. Um, but she and I did a lot of the sort of initial work. And I remember when we were first talking about this, Coach Salucci and you and I had a Zoom meeting and we were just talking about themes and talking about what we wanted the campaign to sort of represent. And um, so when Kelsey and I were trying to put together the name, women, of course, was central. Women had to be in the name. And then, you know, we talked about how we wanted to identify Iowa, Hawks, Black and Gold, Iowa. And we came up with um, Hawkeye women because that we just hadn't seen those two words put together too much in our material. So we kind of like the newness of it. And we like the inclusiveness of Hawkeye women. So we had that, and then, you know, through all these discussions with all of these dozens of people that we're talking about, we came up with several sort of themes and words that Kelsey took um, back to her team. And some of those words were relentless progress and the idea of holding space, um, magnifying and repeating greatness, and then the words that kept coming up were sacrifice, first, best, and fly. So we had all of those sort of themes going we had Hawkeye women, and she came back with the two that sort of rose to the top were soar and rise. So, and she also had the idea of the wings, so I'll give her credit on that too. Um, Jimmy Lasazzo is our designer, and he actually created the wings that are on the logo, and um, he created all the, you know, collateral material, the website, everything. So everything looks really beautiful, and we think rise really represents everything that we're trying to bring into the campaign. We love that kind of that um, positive forward energy. We like sort of that idea of a bird, a Hawkeye in motion. And we just feel like it fits really perfectly with um, being on the rise, aspiring to greater heights. We just, we loved it. Everybody liked it. Um, so we, we landed on Hawkeye Women Rise. And it's a perfect time because we are on the rise and soaring yep. definitely on a legacy and uh, past successes, but looking forward to being able to move into the future in new, exciting, innovative ways. And a capital campaign is the best way to be able to continue to make sure that our Hawkeye women have all the resources they need to be competing at the highest level. So yes. it's such an important endeavor. We have already had, since this has launched, a lot of success. So I wanted to ask you about any exciting updates you can give us already in the capital campaign. Yes. So I thought I would give a couple of updates on two facility projects that are sort of at the forefront right now. Um, one is a gymnastics and spirit squad facility that's already been approved. It's currently out for bid. So we'll get those bids back mid November. We'll choose a contractor and then we'll know more about, you know, when we can start and how long, what the build schedule is. Um, the gymnastics side of the facility is going to have 15,500 square feet of climate controlled training space, team locker rooms, office space, training room. The spirit squad side of the facility will be approximately 4,700 square feet of gym floor and Marley floor training space. There'll be changing rooms, office space, meeting space. Um, spirit squads has never had a permanent home to train in. So this is really important for that program. Um, there's over 80 kids in that program between dance, cheer, and herky. Um, and that building is going to be on our West Campus near soccer, near field, field hockey, right across from um, Hawkeye Tennis and Rec Center. The Board of Regents approved a $20 million facility for that. So we'll know more about costs and, um, as I said before, project completion once um, we get the bids back. So that's project number one. Project number two is a field hockey operations building. Um, we've completed the feasibility study on that. We're still working on the designs, but we know that the facility is going to have locker room, a team, a team meeting space and a film room, um, space for training table, office space, training room. Our field hockey program, you know, is wildly successful, historically successful. And so this is just an important upgrade for that program. It's just going to cut down on the number of places that those student athletes have to go. Um, you know, as part of their athletics experience, they can watch film, they can eat, they can meet, and then they can go out and practice. So that, that facility will be um, it's estimated to cost about $8 million, and it'll overlook Grant Field on the north north end, so like the, the parking lot end, and it'll overlook their facility. So that's going to be really, really special. Um, I heard a stat actually today that we're in the sixth year of that field hockey team maintaining a top 10 ranking for six straight years. It's, exactly. They've never fallen out of the top yeah. 10. I mean, they're just, you know, historically Big Ten and national um, champion contenders. So this is a really 
wonderful upgrade for that program. So we're working on that. Um, we do have, just to circle back to the um, Gymnastics and Spirit Squad building, we do have an anonymous $5 million lead gift on that project. So we're working to, you know, really finish strong on that fundraising campaign, um, private fundraising. And then we just, we're just kind of getting going on field hockey now, but we're, we're working on it. We've raised some money for that already. And um, Coach Salucci is really working closely with us on that. And um, we're going to get there on that project as well. No, it's very exciting. And these are the ways that our wonderful Hawkeye fans can get involved and continue to contribute to the success of these programs and the impact that these facilities make in the lives of student athletes is immeasurable. So we're, I'm so excited and I'm excited to have this podcast support that name so that every week, hopefully we can get it or every month when we meet, we can get a new update from you that I know will be moving us forward. It'd be very exciting. Soon. Yes, we're, we're super, super excited about Hawkeye Women Rise. It includes everyone and you know, like I said at the beginning, it's it's um, it's all inclusive of everybody, everybody. And I thought maybe I would give you a little update on some of the women's basketball fundraising, just because women's basketball is kind of the topic of the day today for the podcast. So women's basketball has really been able to do some phenomenal things here in the last year through private support. We've been able to renovate their locker room, renovate their film room. That all happened this past summer. We were also able to build them a, not, a much um, bigger new trophy case, which is already really almost completely full with all of their awards from last year and all of Caitlin Clark's trophies. So it's beautiful. Um, it really represents all of their tremendous success. So that was um, funded through private support. They were also able to take their foreign trip this uh, last summer to Croatia and Italy. That's 100% private support. Um, and the NCAA allows them 10 extra practices with those foreign trips. So they're really, really valuable to the program. Um, so we're just appreciative of everybody who has been supporting that um, initiative. And then I'll just mention that the Big Ten Network is running a two-part documentary on our women's basketball program. They followed them when they were over in Italy and Croatia. So it's very entertaining. It really gives you a good sense of their personalities. Um, and hopefully the people that watch it that, you know, were able to support the project feel a lot of pride in the cultural experience that they got while they were over there. So Most definitely. Yeah. Check that out on the Big Ten Network. Yes, for sure. How can anyone interested get in touch with you and um, continue to be a part of the Hawkeye Women Rise campaign? Yes. So to learn more about the project, you can visit our website, HawkeyeWomenRise.org. Um, of course, we have brochures. We have some really fun videos that have been um, that we've worked with Kelsey on that will run on Hawk Vision all winter long. Um, there's videos and things on the, on the website, but, um, you can always reach out to us at the UI center for advancement too. And we can tell you more about the campaign and you can also make a gift at hawkeyewomenrise.org if you're inclined to do that. So we appreciate the support. We love the traffic on the website. Um, we're going to keep adding to it, building on it. Um, and we look forward to, you know, sharing more. Thank you to everyone that's been a part of it already and continues to support it because definitely Hawkeye women are on the rise. Thank you so much, Sloan. Yes, thank you. The other ways that our wonderful Hawkeye community, community can continue to support Iowa athletics is by attending all of our home events. So we have a very exciting weekend coming up. I just saw Coach Barnes walk in the door and I wanted to give a shout out to our volleyball team. They will be playing this weekend. Friday at 6 p.m. at Extreme Arena right next door against Rutgers and Saturday night at 8 p.m. against Maryland. And so we'd love to be able to pack the house and get as many fans as possible over to support our women's volleyball team. We also have a very exciting Friday event taking place at Grant Field at 4 p.m. Our nationally ranked uh, field hockey team will have senior day and make sure if you can get out to the field hockey field and cheer them on against Rutgers. We would love to see you at 4 p.m. Friday at Grant Field. In addition, I have some shout outs. Our cross country team is taking on the Big Ten Championships this Saturday up in Madison, Wisconsin. We wish them all the best. Swimming is off to a swim meet at Vandy this weekend and our diving team is off to Ohio State. And a big shout out to our women's soccer team for qualifying for the Big Ten tournament. They will play on Sunday. We'll, we are awaiting game time, but make sure you check out that game and cheer them on in the Big Ten championship. We'll be right back with our upcoming segment that we are now calling Inspire Her with our upcoming guests, P. Sue Beckwith, MD, head women's basketball coach, Lisa Bluter. The Iowa City Area Sports Commission is responsible for our community being home to countless amateur sporting events and state tournaments. 
from state volleyball, wrestling, tennis, and much, much more, the Sports Commission generates significant annual economic impact while adding substantially to our quality of life. The Iowa City Area Sports Commission is a proud presenting sponsor of UI Women's Athletics. Learn more at wegotnext.org. Archive Women Rise is our campaign to support all women's athletic teams here at Iowa. We are building a practice facility for our gymnastics program and spirit squads, and an operations building for our field hockey team, and that's just the beginning. These projects and the goals and plans ahead will be made possible thanks to the generous support of our donors and friends. Selling out the home women's basketball schedule and our first trip to the national championship game are two accomplishments we are really proud of, and you are part of that. We plan to keep it going, and we do that thanks to your generous support. The women who wear the black and gold are capable of absolutely amazing things. Thank you for providing the resources and the support for them to passionately pursue their goals. Please visit HawkeyeWomenRise.org to learn more. And welcome back. This is Inspire Her, and we are so thrilled to have a wonderful guest join us today. P. Sue Beckwith, MD, head women's basketball coach, Lisa Bluter is here. Thank you, Lisa. My pleasure being here, Sasha. I'm looking forward to it. Welcome. Well, three years ago, this week, October of 2020, you were our first guest on uh, Herky's Voice. Wow. That that went by in a that went by in a flash, didn't it? I mean, honestly, that was three years ago. Three years ago this week. Wow. So it's so perfect wow. that you're our first guest as we take the show live with the public. I love it and a live audience. So thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. And I wanted to to sit down and speak with you about so many different um, things. And if if you are wanting to listen to a wonderful backstory on Coach Bluter with that kind of went chronologically through your life. Make sure you go back and check out that episode from October 2020 because we really we started when you were a young girl growing up in Cedar Rapids, That's Lenmore right. High School and your yep. journey into being a student athlete at UNI and into coaching. And I loved oh. hearing all of that in that episode. But I really wanted to do something a little bit different and play off of the theme of this uh, show is really looking at the past, present and future of women's athletics at Iowa and celebrating all of that. So I thought maybe what I would do is go back and take some dates. Okay. I have 10 dates for you. You're going to, you're going to test my memory here, <laughs> Sasha. We're going to go it's back. Not from so good anymore. <laughs> the past, present and future. Uh, and I'll throw a couple of dates out with you and then just kind of give me your reflections and thoughts and we'll, we'll kind of go through them um, today. Awesome. Sounds so fun. You're willing. Let's do okay, it. here we go. All right. So the first date, Fall of 1973, Iowa Women's Athletics begins our Iowa Women's Basketball Program, and Lark Birdsong is our first head coach. And in the fall of 1976, we have a freshman arrive on campus, and her name is Sue Beckwith. Wow. Those are some pretty powerful names uh, in women's basketball at Iowa. But uh, in 1973, I was in sixth grade, so I didn't have a whole lot of idea what was going on here at the University of Iowa, but certainly... Lark Birdsong, I, I stay in contact with her all the time as our first basketball coach um, here at Iowa. In fact, my office is designated to Lark. Uh, a lot of her former players have uh, given money to, to build my office, so I really appreciate that. And Lark and I are really in about monthly contact, and so uh, it's good to have her support of our program to this day. And obviously, Christine Grant, our athletic director, hired Lark um, and uh, just so thankful that she did that. And then Alark was with her to the very end uh, and, and really was a great caretaker for Dr. Grant at the end. Uh, Sue Beck with arriving on campus. Uh, obviously, that's meant a lot to our program. Uh, Sue has endowed my position. She's given you know, a lot financially to the University of Iowa, to women's athletics, especially, um, not only to the RISE program, but to the boathouse, which we have one of the most beautiful boathouses, uh, just unbelievably located on the river here and in, in the middle of our campus. And, and Sue is an avid rower. And so uh, it was a fitting that she uh, gave to that project as well. So Sue is usually in the front row at all of our games. And uh, I know she attributes a lot of her success uh, to the lessons that she learned 
on the court here at, at, in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Well, it wasn't Carver then; it was the Field House. It was the Field House. Yeah. I love the threads um, that go back from you to the very beginning of the program. So I think it's really lovely and so sweet. Uh, my next date for you. Oh gosh. February third, nineteen eighty-five. 22,157 fans watch Ohio State play Iowa women's basketball at Carver Hawkeye Arena. What a day for Iowa women's basketball. <clears throat> in 1985, I was the head coach at St. Ambrose University. I was in my second year, and I was sneaking over here all the time to watch Coach Stringer's practices. Uh, I worked her camps, her basketball camps. Uh, we became friends through that time. But what a marvelous uh, – and, and I loved – I loved hearing Dr. Grant uh, talk about that day and how proud she was of the letter of reprimand she got from the fire department for breaking code on having too many people in Carver. And she had that letter framed and in her office. And she was very proud of that letter. And I mean, again, this was in 1985 and we had 22,000 people in Carver Hawkeye Arena. It just shows you the power of the Iowa fans and what they can do when you give them a challenge. Okay, we're moving on. Okay. April 7th, 2000. <laughs> I remember that day pretty remember well. remember that day? I do. Um, I was the day I was introduced as the head coach here at the University of Iowa. Um, Dr. Grant was by my side, and my husband and my daughter, Hannah, who works for me now as our director of ops, was three years old. And I was nine months pregnant. And I thought, well, if I go into labor, there's no better place to be. I'm right across from uh, from the hospital. So um, I don't love those pictures, to be quite honest. Um, uh, coming into that press <laughs> conference, nine months pregnant, I was huge. Uh, but at the same time, it's a day that I remember ex just so fondly. I, I signed a five-year contract and I remember saying to Dave, gosh, if we can just make it five years, you know, here at the University of Iowa, how, how grateful we will be um, to have that opportunity. Now here it is 24 years later. So uh, very, very thrilled that Dr. Grant, um, you know, obviously took a chance on me from coming over from Drake University and I got the opportunity to lead this program. Well, we're so grateful, Lisa. My next date follows up on, uh, on that for just about 11 months later in March of 2001 and the season that you had and the tournament title that you took after one year? You know, I think the first time you always do something, it's the most special. And uh, that was definitely very special. And I think what made it really rewarding is that, um, you know, the year before they'd won nine games uh, total in their season. And when I came to that press conference, when they introduced me to the press conference, that team wasn't too happy that I was going to be named their coach. Um, they all kind of sat back with their arms crossed, uh, leaning against the wall. And I really had to earn their trust. I had to earn their um, loyalty, their respect um, throughout the course of that year. And man, we were able to do it. I mean, uh, my whole staff, you know, Jan came with me, Jenny came with me. We were able to win them over. And uh, with that came a lot of wins for us, including winning the championship of the Big Ten that first year and then advancing to the second round of the NCAA tournament. And it's funny because to this day, I am such good friends with the women on that team. Kara Consuegra, Randy Peterson Henderson, uh, um, Mary Beardo, uh, Lindsay Meter. I mean, those guys are just to this day um, – such good friends and we stay in contact and a lot of them came to the final four this year i saw a picture of them there yes I loved it. and how special was that i think they had a shirt on that said the original yes. bluters bunch and uh that uh that really meant a lot to me this year to have those women there moving ahead i'm going to take us all the way to march of 2019 and an elite eight finish mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that March and that team. Yeah, Megan Gustafson, Tania Davis, uh, Hannah Stewart, uh, Mackenzie Meyer, uh, Kathleen Doyle, such a great group. I mean, that was a really tremendous group. You know, a lot of people look at our final four this year and think, oh, you know, that was the first time that they had success. You know, I like to remind people, hey, before Caitlin was here, we were one game away from the final four, one game. Uh, and, uh, you know, that was such a special group. Uh, Megan obviously named the National uh, Player of the Year. 
uh, the Naismith Player of the Year, uh, drafted in the ra- in, in um, the the second round of the WNBA draft. Um, but such a great group of women that bonded so well and and got all the way to the Elite Eight. Um, I, I, I always remember we were playing in North Carolina. We had to play North Carolina State, and so we're playing like 90 minutes from their campus. So we're thinking, oh, it's kind of a home court for North Carolina State. And this was in the Sweet 16 to advance to the Elite Eight. And uh, Hawkeye fans were amazing. We had more Hawkeye fans in Greensville, North Carolina, than NC State did only coming 90 miles. And so, again, just such a great memory of Hawk fans and how they supported our teams. Um, And just such a great group uh, of women, again, that I've mentioned with that group. I had the feeling that that team also, as successful as it was, you also left that year hungry. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I hope you leave every year hungry, to be quite honest, because, um, you know, you always want a little bit more, right? That's us as competitors. That's us as athletes, is you always want a little bit more. Um, But truly, that was a special group uh, with Megan um, and Tanaya, who's now on my staff as our player development coach. So it's fun to have her back. Uh, Hannah Stewart is expecting her second child. Uh, Mackenzie Myers expecting her first child. Um, and so it, it's just so much fun to, to be a part of their lives and to, and to see them going on and doing such amazing things. You know, Megan is still in the WNBA, has completed her fifth season in the WNBA uh, and is now signed to play over in London. And she's very excited because she's all about the English family and the and the corgis. She has a corgi of her own. So it's a perfect place for her. But she's been all over. She's been in Greece, Hungary, Poland. Uh, she, you know, she's had some fabulous experience with playing professional women's basketball. Our next date is August 24th. 2022 and this was the date when all of the student athletes gathered at carver hawkeye arena to premiere the unshakable belief documentary all together yeah what a great night that was um you know i I just think that women's athletics gained a lot of momentum through that uh through that documentary um what a great it just it was fun just to have all the women athletes there and see them all bonding together and really understanding the history of our program. You know, I think too often young people come into our programs and they don't understand Title IX. They don't understand what people went through before them so that they can, you know, have these, all these uh, opportunities that they have now. Uh, But if it wasn't for Dr. Grant and and a handful of other women that really fought for Title IX, uh, you know, you wouldn't be here. I probably wouldn't be here, right? I mean, it would have escaped us, yes. these, these unbelievable lessons. And, and I'm just so glad now that today our women are getting these lessons, these valuable lessons that they need on the court, in the classroom, on the field, wherever it is that they're learning them, because uh, that's going to help them be productive the rest of their lives. And uh, again, we're just so appreciative of Dr. Grant. And, and, and if you haven't seen it, you need, you need to go find it. You need to watch it. I'm really proud of the way our athletic department back to that film and also what did such an excellent job celebrating 50 years of Mm -hmm. title nine and 50 years of Iowa women's athletics. And I've often thought that the student athletes that have been present at Iowa now during this time that were able to experience those anniversaries and really see the history up close, really, it has really impacted them in terms of understanding the legacy of Iowa athletics and also feeling a responsibility. I agree. I I totally agree. I think the 50 year anniversary and the way that we at Iowa celebrated that, uh, you know, with our gala and with really events all through the year. I mean, all season we wore 50 years, uh, you know, Title IX, uh, 50 years of Title IX on our warm up shirts all last year. Um, There was many things that we did to bring awareness to our women athletes. And we have to do that. I mean, we can't wait another 50 years. We have to keep giving our players and our athletes these history lessons so that they're appreciative and they don't let it go backwards. They, they can't let it slide backwards. Okay. Well, we can't leave off April 2nd, 2023. Yeah. 12.6 million people tuned in to watch this Um, national championship game. It is to date the most streamed sporting event, men's or women's still. Wow. I didn't even know that. I didn't know that, Sasha. Thanks for that little uh, bit of trivia there. Um, You know, 
it was such a great team. I mean, you could just see the love that they had for each other, how much they cared about each other. Um, obviously, we had a superstar. I mean, Caitlin Clark is just, I mean, she's a diamond in the rough. She's, she, you know, and, and we have her for this whole year. So if you haven't had a chance to see her play, you got to, you got to take this opportunity. We don't know if she's going to come back for a COVID year. A lot of people ask me that. I don't know, but boy, as soon as I know, I'll let everybody else know. You know, I, I wish I did know. Um, of course, we hope she does come back. Um because she's so good for the, the sport of women's basketball nationally, not just in Iowa, not just for the University of Iowa, but nationally. So it was such a special group. But I think that this team, I don't know, I think the country needed something positive to cheer for. I think the country needed something happy and something joyful. And uh, I think this team gave that to them. Um, it was, uh, you know, we had never been there uh, ever, uh, been into the national championship game. And we would have loved to have won that game. There's no doubt, you know, our players, we really thought we were going to win that game when we stepped on the floor that day, uh, but it wasn't meant to be. Um, obviously, I'm not ashamed of finishing national runner up. It was a great accomplishment. And, I, you know, I, we had lots of tears in the locker room, a lot of tears. And it really wasn't because we lost. It was because that group, that special group would not be able to be, play together again. And obviously we, you know, miss Monica Sinano, who's now over playing in Hungary. We miss M McKenna Warnock, who moved on to dental school. Um, but, uh, you know, every year it's 25% in, 25% out. Let's turn the page and move on to the next one. But that one was hard to move on from because it was such, it just, it such a, feel good moment. That um, brings us to our next date. Sunday, October 15th, Iowa sets a new women's basketball attendance record at Kinnick Stadium. 55,646 people in attendance. Yeah, that's a world record. That's a world women's basketball record. Uh, and the University of Iowa did it. And I, you know, I've said this before, but there are so many places you would go to and you would take an idea like that to your administration and they'd think of every reason why not to do it. And instead, our administration thought of every reason to do it. All the benefits that they could get from doing something like that, that would how much it would help our program, help women's sports, bring attention to the University of Iowa. Uh, I could not be more thrilled with our, not only our administration, our ticketing, our marketing, our facilities, I mean, the band, I mean, every, the spirit squad, everybody that showed up and was a part of that day to make it so special. Um, and a quarter of a million dollars to the children's hospital. And a quarter of a million. And that's the Hawk fans, you know, even though they knew they weren't going to have good seats, they still bought a ticket. They want to be a part of history and they want to be a part of that fabulous fundraiser uh, to raise a quarter of a million for the children's hospital. But it was um, a, a, a such a special day. And people have asked me if I cried when I came out. I, I didn't cry. I was just giddy. I mean, I was just so excited and so thankful and so grateful and um, just so happy for my women that they got to experience something like this, that they will be able to tell their kids and their grandkids that, yeah, mom played in front of 56,000 people. That's special. It really is. And so I'm just so happy for our women and uh, for everybody, I, I thought it was um, a day that women just felt really empowered. Yeah. Uh, all women, whether they were in the crowd, whether they were on the sidelines, um, that this could happen for women athletes that right here in good old Iowa. Um, and I think, you know, the women that were older that maybe never got to play athletics because they were, you know, in a place before Title IX or uh, their school didn't support athletics. Um, I, those women are the women that I'm so happy for that they're kind of living vicariously through our team and having this opportunity to experience this. And I've heard from a lot of those women and that's pretty neat. Most definitely. Well, this now brings us to our next date. Here we are, October 24th, 2023. Where are we today? Where's, I know you just came <laughs> to practice. join us from practice. Yeah. How, how, how is everything going? And just, yeah. we get 
we can stay in the present for a little bit and tell us the updates. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody uh, obviously wanted to know what was going to happen with our power forward and center position. And, you know, those of us that, those of you that watched at the crossover watched last Sunday, as we played Clark in our two, you know, our two exhibition games, I think you can see the promise that we have in Hannah Stalky. She's a superior athlete. I mean, she is a unbelievable athlete. And the only thing I think that's holding her back right now is, is her confidence level. And, uh, um, she was thrilled in our last uh, competition to go four for five from the free throw line, 80% and 50% from three point. Um, I can play Hannah at the four. I can also play her at the five if we go small and quick. And so uh, we have so many great opportunities there. But Addy O'Grady had some great minutes uh, in the great moments in the crossover scrimmage. Uh, she shot 60% in our last game. Sharon Goodman came in and did some good things. And so I think you all see that we, we're going to fill those pieces. Are they going to be identical to McKenna and Monica? Absolutely not. These are different human beings. They're different athletes, and they'll they'll make their own way. Um, and then, of course, I, I think you see Molly Davis just improving. Um, I'm, I'm so happy with the way she's playing. Um, but really, you know, Kate Martin, I think, elevated her game. She's having fun. Gabby Marshall is just having a blast out there. Uh, and then, of course, when you have a the AP National Player of the Year coming back, um, you know, we're, we know we're going to see every single defense on Caitlin. Uh, but Caitlin is is really a special young lady, and we're just so glad she's wearing the black and gold. You have always had a creative, innovative mind for what is the future holds and where, where we can go and kind of seeing new, exciting frontiers for women's basketball and women's collegiate sports. Um, the idea for Crossover at Kinnick was yours. So I, I wanted to ask you, I want to put a date in the future. And, and you can speak about this even more broadly than even Iowa women's basketball, but give us where you think we might be. But who knows where athletics is going to be in 20 years. It's changing so quickly right now. I think that we at Iowa are in great hands with our athletic director, Beth Getz. I, um, I can't imagine going through this time with anybody else, quite honestly, leading our program, just because there are so many changes going on right now so much uncertainty. We need that calmness. We need that sense, uh, that presence that is going to calm all the coaches, listen to the coaches, talk, and, and just be able to communicate so well. And I think Beth is an extraordinary communicator. I think she's an extraordinary leader and listener. And uh, I think she does a really good job of connecting people, um, which I think all leaders have to do. And, and I think she's just excellent at that. So I think the University of Iowa Athletic Department is in great hands. If I could dream, uh, I would say that I, I see, you know, the University of Iowa women's basketball team just continuing to excel, continuing to explode with obviously new leadership, you know, at some point in, in the next 20 years, but continuing this marvelous ride that we've been on. Um, the, the, the excitement is there for, but for all athletes, I mean, what I think of what the other women's coaches that I get to work with every day, Lisa Salucci, my gosh. I mean, she's amazing. She's and here today. She, you know, Same leads, let, she starts out the season number one in the country and then has all these darn injuries. And it's part of athletics. I mean, you see what with Kirk Ferentz right now has a great team, but loses all of his star players. I mean, what, what are you supposed to do? And people sometimes are just unrealistic. But, you know, our soccer team making it to, uh, into the into the Big Ten championships. You know, Sasha, I admire what you do with our tennis program. Uh, Megan, I mean, you know, Jim, I know it's it's hard, man, you know, with volleyball. This is a tough conference. This is the toughest conference in America. I think Jim Barnes has the toughest job of all of us in the athletic yes. department. I mean, you know, coming into a program and then having to go against the best teams in the country night after night after night, um, th that's hard. And it takes a great leader to keep your team excited and motivated, wanting to come to practice. And I go by that practice gym when volleyball is in there and I hear excitement. I, I hear women having fun. I hear women that are excited to be there. That's not easy to do. That's a great leader right there for you. We have so many great head coaches and we do. And I, I, I know I've missed some, but I'm sorry. But I mean. yeah, no, we one of the things that I love about 
being a part of this athletic department among the minis is the camaraderie amongst all yes. of the head coaches. Yes. I am inspired. And Joey Woody, what he's done with Joey Woody's track. Been incredible. I mean, unbelievable what he's done with women's track. You don't have to look very far and there's, there's so many great leaders that are doing great yeah. things where you can be inspired. Nathan's been doing an amazing yes, with job with the swimming program. So there's, there's and so now many. And now we get to have, see women's, women's wrestling. Women's Clarissa, wrestling. So very exciting, yeah. very exciting. Well, uh, one of one of the new parts of this show is that we have uh, allowed our Hawkeye community to get on social media and ask you some questions. Okay. So if you'll be able to stay with me for one Absolutely. more break, we'll come back and we'll have uh, some questions from our Hawkeye community and they Absolutely. can uh, hear your responses. Fun. Okay. Sounds good. The Hawkeye Women Rise campaign was launched to fundraise resources for all 14 of our women's sports, generating resources that will allow us to continue to build on the storied success we have here at Iowa. Hawkeye Women Rise will focus on facilities, endowments, scholarships, and other identified needs for our women's programs. Two critical priorities include a state-of-the-art practice facility that will serve our gymnastics, cheer, and dance teams as well as an operations facility for our nationally competitive field hockey program that will keep us on par with the best programs in the country. Iowa Athletics has been at the forefront of supporting women in sports for 50 years. With your investment in Hawkeye Women Rise, there is no limit to what our female student athletes can accomplish. Please visit HawkeyeWomenRise.org to learn more. Welcome back to Hawkeye Women Rise podcast. And we are excited to have our Hawkeye community write in questions for our guest. If you're interested in submitting a question for our guest, stay tuned to our social media post as we get closer to each monthly episode and you can submit your questions in the comment box. So we've gotten some really kind of fun questions. Uh, our first one is, it is obvious that you train your players very well. What do you say to young players about discipline? <laughs> discipline is one of our values. Um, we have five values that when you walk into our locker room, you see them. And uh, discipline is such an important part of being a competitive athlete. And if you can learn how to be disciplined, it's going to help you for the rest of your life. Uh, but, you know, I, I use the example of my players all the time, discipline. You know, I'm only with them four hours a week during the entire center, summer. Well, if they weren't disciplined, if they weren't able to follow a plan, um, you know, we, we'd go backwards during that time. So it takes a great amount of discipline to work hard when nobody's watching, when nobody's in the gym. It takes a great amount of discipline to go against what your peers maybe want you to do. To do. Um, so discipline is essential in being a tremendous athlete, a champion athlete, in my opinion. Taking into account the difficulty of reaching a Final Four, what do you think this current team will have to do differently or better or the same in order to repeat a Final Four appearance? We're going to have to stay healthy. Uh, that's one thing. You know, injuries can just ruin a, a season. You can have an incredibly promising season. And if you have injuries, um, you know, it's out of your control. Um, so I think that's one thing is we have to stay healthy. Uh, we have to keep our same chemistry that we had last year. You know, being able to continue to work on the culture of our program, um, I think that has to happen. Uh, but I think, you know, Hannah is not McKenna, as we've talked about. But I think there are some things that she can do better than McKenna. There's some there are things McKenna did better than Hannah does. But uh, just changing um, how we feel about that, I mean, how we how we look at those positions. Um, but obviously, Caitlin, again, having a tremendous year will be great. But everybody else stepping up too. you know, Kate Martin, Gabby Marshall, Molly Davis, everybody else, you know, increasing their game as well. How are Jada and Taylor progressing? And do you expect them to be in the rotation this season? I do. Um, like Taylor especially is, you know, such a great three-point shooter. Um, she's tremendous. And she's put 15 pounds of muscle on since last year. So I definitely see Taylor taking that next step as a sophomore. Jada missed a lot of last season with a lot of different injuries that kept her out and missed so much. So she's almost like a freshman this year. Um, but I, I'm telling you, Jada can shoot the ball, uh, and she's had some good practices this, this fall. So I'm excited about her potential. Can you give our Hawkeye community an update on the status of Ava Jones? I know that they have a ton of support for her. Yeah. And, and I appreciate all the support that Ava's getting, uh, you know, Ava is, uh, still a ways off quite a ways off. She's still going through surgeries. 
Um, she's had both knee repaired. Uh, she's had her shoulder repaired since she's been here on campus. Uh, she has a, next we're working on her vision. She's seen double vision still, uh, but she had a traumatic brain injury and people just don't bounce back from that. And I don't think anybody realized just how much she was going through and how far she still has to come. So she's a part of our team. She's on scholarship, but she spends most of her practices in rehab and physical therapy uh, and, and doing those sort of things versus being on the basketball court. Yeah, we're always thinking about Ava. Our next question is that we scrimmaged uh, Clark University uh, last Sunday, and we had heard that you were asked to speak to their team. It's quite an honor to speak to an opposing team. What did you say to them? You know, I let, I let them ask me some questions, but I really talked about, you know, my opening statement to them was, hey, basketball's basketball. And I know that you're Division Three, we're Division One. It doesn't matter. I started at Division Three level. And in my opinion, you know, I worked just as hard then as I do now. My players cared about basketball just as much then as they do now. I know they are working just as hard as we are working. And so basketball's basketball. And that's what's fun about our sport is that, a lot of times people want to be just a division one player. Well, there's a spot for anybody at any level, whether that's junior college or division one, two, three, NAIA, uh, it really doesn't matter. And so I, I just told them how much I respected what they were doing. Uh, the only difference is that we have a few more eyeballs on us um, and that's it. Favorite sport other than women's basketball. It was softball. I loved softball. I was a, a shortstop in a first baseman. I loved playing the game of softball. And so that was definitely my second favorite sport. Will there, will there be a Lisa Bluter book one day? <laughs> um, I don't know about that, but there might be a drill book. I've got a lot of good drills um, and I could definitely put those into a drill book. Oh, that would, that would be a bestseller. All right. And our final question, how many sports at the University of Iowa have you attended and rushed the field for? <laughs> One, field hockey, and that's it. That's <laughs> it. Um, I've never rushed the football field. Uh, I've only rushed field hockey, and uh, uh, it was a great day. We beat Michigan. It was so awesome. Um, I love it. I, I've, I rushed the field that day, too, and, and I rushed with my friend Laura, who's sitting over here, and, and then I thought I might get in trouble. Um, but then I saw you on the field, and I said, nope, if Lisa's on the field. <laughs> we'll band together here. <laughs> band together. <laughs> uh, those are some great memories. Thank yeah. you so much for coming out today and sitting My down pleasure. and joining us. I, I loved hearing about this, and we're so excited to watch the team compete. And honestly, just a complete sense of pride to have you as our women's head coach. Well, as and this Rise campaign is just tremendous, and, and we have to continue to rise as women and, and supporting women. And my opinion, you know, women have to support women. Yes, we need men to support women, but we really, I mean, it has to start with us. It has to start with us supporting each other and uh, financially support friendship wise um, is uh, we have to support each other. So let's continue to rise. Let's make this campaign tremendous. Let's get this gymnastics uh, facility definitely built. For sure. Thank you so much. And for those pleasure, of you son. wanting to come back out and watch us, we'll be back on November 7th with our head women's wrestling close coach, Clarissa Chung. Thanks, everybody. And as always, go Hawks. Go Hawks. This has been the Hawkeye Women Rise podcast presented by the Iowa City Area Sports Commission. Hawkeye fans, remember to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. Once you become a Fight for Iowa podcast subscriber, you'll automatically receive the latest episodes of the Fight for Iowa podcast, the Hawkeye Women Rise podcast, Hawk Talk replays, exclusive game content, and more. Until next time, on Iowa and go Hawks! The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.